Let's have an objective look at the core versus knots debate from a first principles perspective, focusing on the most primary source in Bitcoin, which is the Bitcoin white paper. The goal is to find clarity. Do you want to run core or knots? Now, a couple disclaimers. Of course, I have an opinion, but I'm going to try to focus on first principles and I'll do my best to let you know when I'm voicing an opinion. I don't want to focus on people or politics in this video. I don't know Bitcoin mechanic. I've never met any core developers. However, I do watch Bitcoin University and I have taken Matthew's course in the past. It was great, but I don't know Matthew. We have no affiliation together. I have no ads, no sponsors on my channel. I'm value for value only. So my opinion can't be bought. And this truly just is a non-technical pleb perspective, me trying to find signal through the noise. So first principle one, Bitcoin is a monetary network. This comes directly from the Bitcoin white paper where we see peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash. Now I find it very interesting that the word purely is used here, but I mean, that can lead to subjective interpretation. What purely means to me might mean something different to someone else. So we're gonna take it out of our definition. We're just gonna focus on the monetary network aspect, right? A little bit further down on the page, we have introduction. And it says once again, electronic payment system without the need for a trusted third party. So according to Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, the collective consciousness, the person, whoever, Bitcoin is defined as peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash and electronic payment system with the goal of helping us transact directly with each other without the need for a trusted third party. Essentially, Bitcoin is a monetary network. First principle one. First principle two, honest nodes secure the network. This is also on page one in the introduction. We see the system is secure as long as honest nodes collectively control more CPU power than any cooperating group of attacker nodes. Now, what are honest nodes? What are attacker nodes? That depends on our personal perspectives, I, I think. So we're gonna take that out of our definition and it's just gonna be nodes secure the network. Essentially, that's what's being said here. First principle three, nodes decentralize the network. Now the word decentralization is not actually used in the Bitcoin white paper. However, peer to peer is said everywhere. And essentially it means the same thing as decentralized. And we know that it's the nodes that keep the network decentralized. First principle four, Bitcoin must be decentralized and secure to remain a monetary network. Now this isn't said in the Bitcoin white paper. I base this off of Jeff Booth's thesis. He says this very often, but I don't want to put words in his mouth. So here's Jeff Booth speaking on these points directly from primary sources. From Bitcoin's perspective, if you just said um, you have an open, decentralized, secure protocol bounded by energy. And, and that's my kind of five criteria on what, the, on what this is. So that system bounded by energy, as long as it stays decentralized and secure, the only thing that would change this is if somehow Bitcoin broke and wasn't decentralized and secure. But that system bounded by energy will reprice all $900 trillion of assets, all. It's not, it's not Bitcoin isn't within the system, it's outside the system bounded by energy. There's a really important differentiation. I, you know this, many Bitcoiners know this, but many Bitcoiners know it and at the same time, they're pricing it as an asset within the system. Okay. So it's outside, if you hold it in self-custody, if it stays decentralized and secure, bounded by energy, it will. it is repricing that entire system over time. And I chose Jeff Booth because I think he's one of the deepest first principle thinkers in Bitcoin. And he often brings up this point as the thing that is necessary to Bitcoin's success. It also perfectly brings together all of our first principles from earlier. So let's have a look at this. First principle one, Bitcoin is a monetary network. First principle two, nodes decentralize the network. Three, nodes secure the network. And four, Bitcoin must be decentralized and secure to remain a monetary network. Now, Jeff Booth has also brought up the importance of using Bitcoin as a medium of exchange, meaning actually buying things in Bitcoin with Bitcoiners but I won't touch on that point in this presentation. Now let's have a look at what Bitcoin Core version 30 is doing versus Bitcoin Knots. So a major change is coming up with Bitcoin Core version 30 in October, 2025. And the specific thing that's really changing is OpReturn, which is a script allowing non-monetary data on chain. What does that mean? Well, here's some examples of op return. You've got JPEGs, images, inscriptions, ruins. Essentially, these things are not monetary transactions. So what's happening in October, 2025 when it comes to this? Well, 
Pre-2014, we were allowed to upload 42 bytes of non-monetary data, right? So a tiny, tiny amount. Since 2014, it's been increased to 83 bytes. That allows these JPEGs and other things to be uploaded to the Bitcoin blockchain. But still, it's not major data. However, core version 30 will be allowing 100,000 bytes of data. That's massive. And it allows for much larger files. So videos, MP3s, photos. So you can imagine that there can be images like the pizza that we saw earlier or the memes, but there could also be things that are illegal that could be uploaded to the Bitcoin blockchain. Images and videos and things that you wouldn't want to have on Bitcoin, right? It's just objectively, that's a possibility. And we've already seen that happen on other blockchains that allowed larger amounts of data. So what is Bitcoin Knots doing? Well, Bitcoin Knots is not a fork, first of all. It's another implementation of Bitcoin that allows us to filter out op return. So as node runners, we actually have the choice if we run Bitcoin Knots to not relay transactions containing arbitrary data. Meaning we can say, hey, I don't wanna relay op return outputs. It also allows us to say the maximum size that we allowed. For example, we can set the maximum size of op return data in bytes to 42, which was the original that was in the first version of Bitcoin. Now let's have a look at how Bitcoin Core version 30 compares to our first principles from the beginning of the video. What is Bitcoin and what is Bitcoin Core version 30 planning on doing? So first principle one from earlier, Bitcoin is a monetary network. Bitcoin Core version 30 is going to allow larger files onto the blockchain, objectively speaking. You'll be able to upload videos, MP3s, larger photos. So objectively speaking, version 30 violates Bitcoin as a monetary network by welcoming non-monetary data onto the blockchain. I use the word welcoming because opening up the filters to that extent is saying, hey, feel free to upload these large files objectively speaking. First principle two, nodes decentralize the network. At the moment, it's pretty easy to run a Bitcoin node, right? You just need a Raspberry Pi or a cheap computer or an old laptop and a one terabyte drive. But even then, I do wanna note that it is pretty exclusionary because you still need a couple hundred dollars to have this set up and not everyone can afford that, right? However, Bitcoin Core version 30 compromises decentralization when it becomes too expensive, too complex to run a Bitcoin node because the blockchain is bloated with non-monetary data. What happens when you need a 100 terabyte drive or your Raspberry Pi can't run it anymore because you need a more powerful machine? We've already seen this happen in mining. I've heard of someone who in 2012 went to Goodwill and bought a bunch of old computer parts and was actually mining Bitcoin. So it's pretty crazy you could do that back then, but it's impossible now. You need ASIC rigs and tons of electricity. Like you need a really big financial investment to be able to actually do that, which has led to Bitcoin mining becoming pretty centralized. So based on the Bitcoin white paper, it's hard to maintain decentralization if people can't run nodes. And Bitcoin Core version 30 doesn't help us run nodes because it allows people to upload large amounts of data to the blockchain, which bloats the size of the blockchain, which makes us store more data. First principle three, nodes secure the network. So we just saw if the blockchain has a bunch of data that's non-monetary, it can quickly get filled up and become much bigger. I put 100 terabytes here as an example, but who knows how much data people could upload. So when it comes to security, Bitcoin Core version 30 compromises Bitcoin security when nodes become public data storage, right? When we're forced to hold and relay illegal content potentially, uploaded to the blockchain by bad actors. The content could be legal, but it could also be illegal, which would make running a Bitcoin node illegal because we would be storing data that we shouldn't be storing on a server in our homes, right? And that compromises security. What if people could upload viruses or things like that? That compromises Bitcoin security. So then when it comes to first principle four from earlier, well, Bitcoin must be decentralized and secure to remain a monetary network. The thing is Bitcoin is no longer a decentralized or a secure monetary network if the previous first principles are violated. If it's not decentralized, if it's not secure, it's not a monetary network anymore. And so what is Bitcoin in that case? I'll talk about what you can do in a minute, but first I wanna say Bitcoin is far more than money. And maybe this touches a little bit more on a personal opinion, but when you're really far down the Bitcoin rabbit hole, you can't not see it as more than money. I recently wrote a book called Beyond Money, Regaining Sovereignty, Rediscovering Humanity. Jeff Booth graciously provided the foreword to this book. It's at the crossroads of Bitcoin and spirituality because once you go far enough down the rabbit hole, you realize money touches everything in our lives, everything. 
And if you have a sound money standard, it really changes absolutely everything. Touching on this, Jeff often mentions Bitcoin as money means 8 billion people in service to 8 billion people. For me, it entails discovering what it means to be human beyond fiat constructs. And that touches on everything. Innovation, technology, creativity, and service to humanity. It's the sovereign individual serving the collective and the collective serving the sovereign individual. I'm super excited about this present future in a sense, because a lot of Bitcoiners are already experiencing it. But of course we would want more people to be able to experience it. And if we compromise Bitcoin, this is an opinion, we won't be able to have that reality. So what can you do? Well, vote with your node. If you believe that Bitcoin is money right now, the best option is to run Bitcoin Knots. And that could change, of course. If Knots does something shady or strange or weird, or I don't know what, it's very easy to switch over to another implementation of Bitcoin. At the moment, this is the best implementation if you believe Bitcoin is money. However, if you want Bitcoin to become fiat, run version core 30. Now this is a personal opinion, but if Bitcoin is captured by fiat incentives, it becomes fiat. If Bitcoin stores non-monetary transactions, in my opinion, it becomes a shitcoin. Seeing its potential for humanity to end a karmic cycle of 5,000 years, I personally don't want that to happen. And I think there's a lot of us out there who are also voting. Because at this moment, almost 20% of the network have switched over to Bitcoin Knots. But here's the thing. We have the power of choice. Bitcoin Core is not Bitcoin. We are the nodes. We get to choose. And our vote actually matters for once. I can only encourage you to run Bitcoin Knots. And yes, that is a personal opinion, not a first principles fact. <laughs> I do want to mention something important when it comes to running Bitcoin Knots, but first, um, I just want to mention some positive aspects of this debate because there's very good things coming out of this. There are more nodes. More people are starting to run nodes because they see what's happening and they're like, you know what? I want to have a vote. Wonderful. And there's also more active nodes, meaning people who were already running nodes and maybe had an old version of Bitcoin or who weren't maintaining it or paying much attention. They're like, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to update my node or I'm going to run this implementation because I believe that Bitcoin is money or fiat or whatever you choose, you know? So that's wonderful. There's also more awareness of centralized mining because through this discussion, there's also been, hey, you know what? There's a lot of centralization and mining happening. So more people are running solo miners, which is excellent to help decentralize mining. And connection. Honestly, I've met so many cool people through the discussions on Noster about uh, what's going on. So yeah, for me, uh, it, this is really cool signal and I'm just meeting a lot of people who are really interesting uh, in this space. So yeah, if you want to learn more, I would highly recommend Bitcoin Not Crypto's videos on the topic as well as Bitcoin University. There are tons of tutorials on how to switch over to Bitcoin Knots or how to run Bitcoin Knots on YouTube. So just do a search and find whichever educator you connect with the most to figure out how to run a Bitcoin node based on your situation, either a new node or switching over. So I want to make an important note. Uh, I'm running an Umbral Bitcoin Knots node. And when I set it up, I noticed that relay transactions containing arbitrary data is actually enabled by default. So I personally disabled it because I don't want to relay transactions containing arbitrary data, right? Because I've seen a lot of videos where people say, oh, all of the default things in Bitcoin Knots are totally fine. You don't have to like check the, the defaults. It should be okay. But when I went through it, I was like, well, isn't this the whole point? We want to not relay op return data. I could be wrong. Please let me know in the comments if I misunderstood this, but I deactivate it because I don't want to be relaying this kind of data. If you're running Bitcoin Knots, just make sure that you actually go through the settings and set things the way you want them. If you enjoy this video, please feel free to value for value. That's the only way that my channel is funded. I have no ads, no sponsors, and my only source of income is my book. So if you want to help support, that would be awesome to buy a copy in Bitcoin, of course.